Hello, today we're going to be taking a look at Circle of Six, a quick to learn set collection card game. Before we begin, we must point out that the designer of Circle of Six, who we both know personally, sent us a copy of Circle of Six to check out. So Circle of Six was designed by a friend of mine, Robert M. Everson, and published by the company he does editing work for, Encoded Designs. Robert, or Bob, or Old Man Logan, is also one of the hosts of the excellent Misdirected Mark Gaming podcast, which I have been a long-term fan of and is how I met Bob. Now, Bob's been playtesting and showing off Circle of Six for a number of years, hoping to find a publisher. In 2020, after having no luck, he decided to release it to the public, print on demand through drive through cards. Now, Circle of Six plays two to six players with a round of the game taking under 15 minutes easily. Now, a full game, which is played until someone wins three, five, or seven car rounds, will take significantly longer. This game currently has a price on drive through cards of $14.95 US. And I should note that we should uh, point out that the Misdirected Mark show is also a patron of the show. Yes, that is true. Thank you. Uh, now, with a light game combined with 15-minute rounds, it's a great choice for a relaxing game, whether you want to talk and get distracted during or between the yes. rounds of the game. Now, the goal of a round of Circle of Six is to collect a set of cards numbered one through six. These can be your cards or your opponents, and you're doing this by placing cards into the circle or manipulating the marker and collecting cards from the circle. For a look at the quality of the cards and how they were shipped, check out our Circle of Six unboxing video on YouTube. So my copy of Circle of Six came in a clear plastic card case. Now the cards are nice playing card quality. You get six circle cards numbered one through six, two marker cards, only one you use during the game. There's two different options. You have six player ID cards and then six decks, which contain 14 cards each, which is the numbers one through six, twice and wild cards two wild cards now in addition to being color coded the individual decks feature unique symbology to assist with any vision problems players may have like color blindness so and they are they're a they're a paper card what sort of finish on them uh should they be sleeved for heavy use or, or will they hold up so the the technical term is u.s playing card quality so they are bicycle card quality okay. which i they're not plastic, but they're plasticized. Like whatever, whatever standard playing cards are made of that's it's okay. somewhat water resistant, but right. not waterproof. Now, what's notably missing from this plastic card case are the rules for how to play the game. The only place you can actually get a copy of the Circle of Six rules is from the drive through cards page for the game. Now, I did point out to Bob that he may want to do something about this, whether it's include the rules on in with the cards on cards. Or even better, in my opinion, just simpler is put a QR code to where you can download the rules. Now, the card set that I did mention has a two marker cards. Well, there is a bonus marker card. You have one that lays flat that you can put on the cards. Or there's one that just with a pair of scissors you can cut and make a little standy, which you can move around, which you end up turning instead of flipping while you play. All right. Well, how about you give us an overview of how to play Circle of Six? So you start by creating a ring with the six circle cards, or I should say a circle of six cards so that they're in numerical order going clockwise, one, two, three, four, five, six. You're then randomly going to cover one of those with the marker card. Now, each player grabs one of the unique decks, or sorry, they're not unique, the unique colored decks. They're all the same decks. Uh, and the player ID card of that color and place the player ID card in front of them. Now, there's a quick card draw to determine starting player. After that, you shuffle your decks and then discard the top card face down to the middle of the circle of six and then draw a second card into your hand. Now, discarding one card per deck makes it so that anyone doing card counting doesn't have mm -hmm. perfect information. Something I think is very important in these style of games. Now, a round of circle of six is played until one player is able to collect a full set of cards numbered one through six or everyone runs out of cards, plays their last card from their deck. Now, each turn, you're going to draw a card. You then take any of your cards that are still face up in the circles, face up on top of the circle cards since your last turn, and put them in your scoring action or scoring area. You're then going to take one action. The actions are add a card to the circle, play a card from your hand onto the matching circle card. Note, you can't play on the one that is covered by the marker. Now, this card is placed on top of any other cards that are already there. 
The other option is to move that marker card. You're going to discard a card from your hand, and you're going to move the marker in the direction shown on it, a number of spots equal to the value of the card. So if you discard a three, you move it three spots. You're then going to take the top card from that spot and put it in your scoring pile, and then put the marker onto the spot where you took the card, but flip it over. So some real exciting waiting and watching, potentially with wincing and grunting sound effects, inset with brief moments of lunging with joy or crushing despair. Yeah, this is definitely one of those games where like, oh, you took my spot, or oh, I, oh, it's almost there, it's almost there, it just gets to me one more turn, I'm getting my life, oh, and someone moved the dang marker. That is the kind of game this is. Now, wild cards, you get two of them in your deck, they can be played on any circle card, then count as having the value of that card for the rest of the round. Wild cards can also be used to move the marker, but here you discard every card in the circle except those that are under the marker, and then flip the marker over. That's some pretty heavy-duty action for a wild card. Yeah, the wild cards in this game can be powerful. Now, I mentioned flipping the marker card. That's because it's two-sided. Now, no one can play on the, the, the spot the marker is on, and the marker has arrows on it pointing either clockwise or counterclockwise. So every time someone moves the marker, it's going to flip over. So it's going to go clockwise, then counterclockwise, then clockwise, then counterclockwise, back and forth. So every time the marker moves, it gets flipped. So it is possible to bounce the marker back and forth between two spots on the circle then? Yes, like I can move it three, and if the next person moves it three, it's going to go back to where it just was. Now, me moving it back and forth is going to really depend on the other players not doing much. So that's probably going to be a little unlikely, especially at the highest player count. Now, you also have a player ID card. What this does is just shows everyone what color you are for one, but then tells you where to put your discarded cards and your scored cards. Um, honestly, you can do either way. Like, this is two-sided, so you can go left, right, or right, left, which I thought was interesting, though it does make it a little confusing during play going, are those your discards or your scored cards? Kind of, I, I suggest you have everyone place it the same way. Now, as the game stands, the scoring cards are onto the side, and there's no way to like organize them. You just make a pile of them, you spread them out, you splay them, which is fine for cards number one to six. Where there's a problem is wild cards. So remember, when you play a wild card, it takes on the number you played it on, but you have to remember what that wild card is. Um, often this is easy to do. Like if you have a four and a six and you wild card a five, you just put it in between those and it's obvious, but sometimes a little harder. So you might want to use a marker of some sort, like a D6. Now, the designer is working on a more suitable solution for this that will be included in the game. And to be fair, I doubt anyone Bob has any regular contact <laughs> with doesn't have a D6 at hand at any moment. Very true. Technically, you you could need, what, six player 12 D6s if you happen. Well, by then you'd have won the round, I would hope. So I, I guess if they all 12 could be ones, you might need a lot of D6s. But yeah, you'll need some way to organize those wild cards. So the round ends when you've got a full set in your scoring section of a full set of cards, one, two, three, four, five, six, or when everyone's played their last card. Now, if the round ends due to running out of cards, this is when you go to those cards you discarded at the beginning of the round. Starting with the first player and going clockwise, you're going to draw one of those face down cards from the center of the circle and move the marker, removing anything it lands on from play. If a wild card is drawn from the center all cards are removed from play and you do this for each player so all you're basically doing is removing cards from the circle then everyone collects any cards left face up of theirs and score them which can cause someone to win the round but don't fret someone will win even if no one got them all yes so collecting a full set either during the round or after gives you one point if two players complete a set at the same time the player whose set contains the most of their own color wins with a further tiebreaker being the total number of cards collected. Now, if no one completes a set, the point just goes to the player who collected the most cards using those same tiebreakers. Now, when a round's completed, you remove all the cards, return them to their players. The only thing that stays out is while well, the circle would still be there and the marker stays in its last position. Now, a full game of Circle of Six, as written, is played three points for a short game, five points for a normal game, or seven points for a long game. And you can only get a maximum of one point for per round. Mm -hmm. So playing to seven points can take a while unless one person is just really good. And really lucky. Now that we know how to play, let's move on to our thoughts about Circle of Six. 
So I first got to play Circle of Six at BreakoCon up in Toronto, Ontario, where I met a number of folks involved in the Gnome Stew blog, the Mr. and Mark podcast, and the Encoded Designs publisher. This is a group that likes to be known as the Gem Team, Gnome Stew, Mr. and Mark Encoded, with the designer of the game, Bob, being one of those awesome people I got to meet. I then got to play a few more rounds of it at Queen City Conquest, and right from the start, I thought Bob had a really solid game here. Now, when we were playing, we were playing prototype copies, but they were basically what we're playing now. Now, Deanna also played it and liked it, and you also got to play it at QCC, didn't you? I did, indeed. Dee and I sat down while you were playing an RPG and played a few rounds. Uh, what I don't recall, though, is doing much, if any, scoring. Mm -hmm. We were just playing through hands and enjoying that sort of single round experience uh, of, of, you know, hey, I won this hand. Hey, you won that hand. Yeah, uh, something to do between games, something to do to kill time. Yeah. Now, having already experienced the game and enjoyed it, I was really excited to hear that Bob has finally released it, right? He released the Kraken. He put it out print on demand. And I was even more excited when Bob's like, hey, do you want a copy to check out? And I'm like, oh, that's awesome. What I was surprised when it showed up is that it was the game we played. Like, it looks identical. At, to the game I played at cons. Now, I'm not saying this is a bad thing. It just, I didn't expect it. Like, I expected the production copy to look different than the prototype copy. Now, the game does feature solid graphic design. It's, in general, very easy to read across the table, though I do wish there was a bit more contrast, maybe a black outline on the things, especially the yellow, especially if there's any glare, because, again, these are those slightly shiny cards. The, the colors could stick out a bit more. The design works, like it's easy to tell the difference between one through six, and the wild cards are very easy. I just, I don't know, maybe it's just false expectations. I just thought the production version of 606 would pop more than the prototype. Now, to be fair, this is more or less what you get with most drive through card products, unless you go for a uh, custom tuck box or, you know, something else. Uh, this is certainly less of a product than you would expect to see on a retail shelf. Yeah. Now, the biggest disappointment with the set of cards from drive through cards, though, was that lack of instructions with the physical product. Now, I know the game. I played it at a couple different cons, but even I needed a reminder for how to play. For someone picking up this game who doesn't know the game and has never seen it before, I think they're going to be disappointed and troubled by the lack of instructions. Well, yes, there is a link to the rules right on the drive through page. It's not really obvious, and there's nothing in the description that says, if you order this, be sure to download the rules. It just needs to be more out there so people know. Indeed, most people don't expect to go hunting for rules. They're in the box, or at least you're directed straight to them right there in the box. Well, mm. sure, they're simple. I mean, it, it's, an, it's an easy game. The disconnect between ordering and receiving the print-on-demand product is enough to make it easy to forget that you might have seen that link when you bought the game and honestly i googled it and they did not come up and i ended up going well these are from drive through cards right because i didn't buy it off drive through cards i had to go look and then eventually i found it on drive through cards i'm like oh there are the rules okay now sadly along with this once you do find the rules they're honestly not very clear now, most of the gem team are RPG folks who also play some board games, and it seems obvious to me that the rules for Circle of Six were written and edited people who are more comfortable doing RPG rules than board game rules. Now, I'm not going to get into details here, because mainly I did get a hold of Bob, and I sent him a pretty extensive list of questions and potential edits, and he is already working on updating the rules. So hopefully, by the time you check out the rules, this won't be a problem at all. And we have spoken in length about the importance of clear rules in making a game really work. Yeah. Now, my only other complaint about this game is the wild cards. Um, the fact they take on the number where they're placed is fine, but having to track that in some way, once you score them, can be a problem. After our last play, I'm just going to make sure to have these six dice amount, so I can just mark one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, other things we've thought of is to make some kind of play mat for each player, even if it's just a sheet of paper that says one, two, three, four, five, six on it, so you have somewhere to place your cards. Or if you're not playing with a full player count of six, use some of the other cards as placeholders, or possibly use playing cards like one, two, three, four, five of aces just to be used it, or use the cards of another player color that's not in the game to replace the wild cards. So when you score a wild card, just swap them out. It just, it needs something. Again, it's an easy problem for players to solve, but most people who buy a game don't want to solve problems. They just want to play the game. Yeah. Now in all, I end up finding these problems really disappointing because circle of six as a game, is still a lot of fun. 
It's a light, casual, easy to teach game that I think is perfect for what Sean talked about earlier and how he played it. A social game night where it's the kind of game you don't have to play a lot of attention to, where you're just hanging out and chatting with friends and you happen to be playing games. That's also how I was introduced to Social Circle of Six. In a social setting where we were talking about our con experiences and getting to know each other and just happened to be playing Bob's new game while we were playing, while we were chatting and getting to know each other. This is where I think Circle of Six still shines. With that, there is enough depth here for people who want to take things more seriously, who are taking the time to do card counting and remembering that you obviously only have a three in your deck and there's two cards left, so you're going to have to put that three up. There, you can play the game at that level. Now, just like Sean, when I played Circle of Six, we never kept track of points. And honestly, I didn't realize that was part of the game. We played it like I play concept or many people play code names or other party games. We just toss the scoring out, play a few rounds in a row, not really keeping track of who was winning each round and who wasn't and just stopped and we got tired of the game. Or like I said, this was at a con. So we play until someone had a game they had to go to, to run, or someone had to run off to use the washroom. We never tracked points at all. And I still think circle of six worked really well this day. What I question is playing the game for a set number of points as indicated. Like the default is you play until one player has five points. This could be 25 rounds of circle of six. That's a lot of circle of six. I like the game, but that's more than I'd ever want to play in one sitting. And even playing to three points, unless you get someone who kind of runs away with it, even that could take a long time. And it's easy enough just to play until you're done playing and whoever has the most points wins or ties or ties or sit there and go you know we're gonna play for an hour and then whoever has tied points they play themselves and the next person to win takes it all something like that well the rules could use an update and yes the pod file should be updated to somehow include those rules or at least a link to those rules i think circle of six is a very solid light card game well, it does have take that elements. It just never feels nasty. It's just kind of part of the game. What it really gives me a feel of is playing games like Uno, though a more deep and complex and honestly more interesting Uno. But like you don't usually get mad at someone for turning the turn direction in Uno or for making you draw plus four, especially when using the real rules where you don't stack eight plus fours at once. Indeed, I think with the right polish and push behind it, I don't see any reason this couldn't be a large mass market game yeah I, I, I think you're right like if you're looking for a light easy to teach card game something that's perfect to play in a social setting where you want to hang out with friends but also play a game check out circle of six now a shout out i don't usually do on this show and i don't know how many publishers are listening to me right now but if we do have any publishers who listen if you're looking for a light party game to add to your catalog i know bob would love to show you circle of six and I would love to see a professionally produced, designed, developed version of this game out there on the market. And like Sean said, I can see this on shelves on the hanging rack next to Uno and Duo and Wizard and all the other mass market, not just poker like card games. Indeed. Well, that's it for our look at Circle of Six. I invite you to read more about this easy to learn set collection game in the review section of our blog over at tabletopbellhop.com.